In the last episode, we cleared the boat out. So in this video, it's time to fill it back up again. We took the first carload of brand new stuff and put it on board. High quality premium solar module. It's always exciting opening new toys. A little bit bigger and a little bit heavier uh, than I kind of thought it would be. So mounting it is the big challenge we have here. Um, and so we've got to do some modifications to the cupboard to make sure that we've got a really solid base uh, for this to, uh, to, to sit on and all the other components that are going to go in here as well. But before we did that, I needed to cut an inspection hole in both the fuel and water tank so we had access to have a look inside and clean out if necessary. Sending a camera down into the water tank, you can see what 50 years has done to the inside. The tank is very difficult to access and is fiberglassed into the structure of the boat, so we won't be putting drinking water in here. Instead, we'll be installing a new plastic one somewhere else on the boat. The tank's dealt with then, I could get back to the electrical cupboard and mix some epoxy resin up to glue a series of battens to the fibreglass wall of the boat which would support the electrical equipment. So this head end cupboard uh, is almost completed, batteries are installed, um, we've got the, uh, the inverter charger, DC battery to battery charger for the engine alternator, although we haven't got an engine at the moment, and we've got the solar charger in. Um, we've got the fuse boards in, we've got wiring in, and we've got one of the sub boards including uh, the Wi-Fi, uh, the bilge pump, uh, the secondary bilge pump and the water pump, uh, as well as, obviously that's the controller for the, uh, for, for, the, um, for the inverter, and then we've got actual mains as well, from the, either from the inverter or from shore, shore power. So we've already done that, um, the fridge is in and is, uh, is, is keeping things cool, which is a blessing at the moment. Obviously it's not much of a novelty watching somebody open a fridge with stuff in it. But there's the fridge with stuff in it. And there's the little light to show it's working. Another thing that we've done is we've removed uh, the, uh, the steering wheel here. And uh, we've actually, if I take this to pieces, um, removed all the dials. And we've also got rid of all the uh, the Morse controls and steering equipment that was in here previously. Um, we're going to change, it was using Bowden cables, and we're going to change to having hydraulic steering. We haven't got around to fitting that yet, but that is, we're sort of getting ready. And this massive slot, by the way, is, it was a chain-driven autopilot. So the chain went through that slot. It's quite a fascinating piece of equipment. With a little more digging around, cutting and clearing old cables, I was able to get access to the enormous motor that powered the chain. On closer inspection, I found out it was a Nico Marine NM62 autopilot. And what an absolute monster. A little googling, and I uncovered an instruction manual. And looking at the schematic, there should be a compass somewhere. And sure enough, hiding under the four cabin floor, I found this magnificent beast. This is the NM3 transmitting compass. Amazing how technology's come on in the last 50 years. Once that was all cleared out, I could install a new fuse board in the bottom of the console. With the new fuse board in place, I intended to use the old cable routes out of the cupboard. So I had to cut a few exploratory patches in the wall in the saloon. Unfortunately, these got bigger and bigger until it was clear the only solution was to remove the entire wall covering and start again. There we go. That's the wall done. Woohoo! In order to uh, affix some kind of wall, some kind of cladding to this uh, wall, you see, the, you see the shape of the boat there, the fiberglass. Um, what we've got to do is we've got to add uh, the, we've got to add some battens and what I've done in order to get that ready is we've got some bits of bits of stick and uh, we're going to make those we've cut them so that they're a bit more flexible so we can do that 
and then we can glue them in place and that'll give us then the advantage that uh, when we come to put a sheet of wood on there we've got something to screw into and obviously the gap will be uh, foam insulation. I'm using an impact adhesive for first fix to hold the batten in place immediately and then I'll go round the edges with a two-part epoxy later on to give it strength. It's a pretty much immediate according to the uh, um, instructions. So I'll put the, lay, ladle that all over there. Okay, and then it should just go in and on and stick. Today, we are collecting the engine uh, and sending it away for its refurbishment. So uh, we'll uh, pick it up with a forklift truck uh, that Tash is driving, and we're gonna put it in the van, and then uh, we'll be sorted. I'll push you with the other pallet. So that's the engine gone. What we've got to do now is uh, is go chase after it so that we can unload it at the other end. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.